what's going to happen when a plague breaks out is that uh, here's I'm not I'm not Michelangelo right? that's the black rat that's the flea I'll give you the names in a minute and that's the worst darn thing on earth that last thing it's a basilisk uh, the black rat's name officially is Rattus 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 all right triple rat this flea is and I just call it Cheopis and this basilisk was known by a number of names uh, Pastorella pestis was until about uh, 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 1970. Uh, it's named after the Louis Pasteur uh, lab in Paris. It, so it named it after that. Uh, after 1970, it's called your uh, uh, Cinea uh, pestis, which is the uh, Russian uh, scientist who did a lot of the work on discovering this creature. What happens here is thousands of these bacilli feed on the flea. They enter the flea's stomach. The flea is feeding on the black rat. The flea gurgitates all of these bacilli into the black rat. So the black rat becomes a carrier. All right. Uh, there's possibly a reason. I'll get into it in a minute. But this is the sequel. If you get if you get bitten by one of these, if I brought into this room a bunch of black rats and let them run around, right? Well, you'd leave. But uh, um, even if they're infected, you're all right, because they'd have to all die before those fleas look for another host. And you're you're way on on the bottom of the list. Uh, my God, uh, you're not hairy enough. All right. Uh, they attack the groin and the armpits uh, of humans. Uh, but that's how you get it. If, if that rat bites you, uh, uh, you're not going to get it, uh, bubonic plague. All right. But anyway, the flea transfer, let's say, goes to you. After about four days, you see these swellings. And they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they turn black. This is how it gets the name Black Death. That's the least fatal form of plague. It's bubonic. All right. You can survive from that. You're going to look like hell. But <laughs> uh, you can't survive that. There were survivors. If by chance it enters your lungs, now we're going into that 99 percentile. Uh, uh, that's known, known as pneumonic plague. You're not going to survive that. Uh, if it enters your bloodstream, there you're at 100. That's septicemic. And it's like leukemia. Of course, it isn't. But uh, uh, it's the same thing. Uh, the latter two are almost instant deaths. The primary uh, a villain here, of course, is this black rat. I said before, he's ratus, ratus, ratus. He's also known as the ship rat, roof rat, alexandrine rat, Sicilian rat, fruit rat, corn rat, tree rat, in France, it's known as the English rat, and in England, it's known as the French rat. The brown rat has been known as Rattus Rattus. It's only two. Right? The Norway rat, huge mouse, gray rat, wander rat, house rat, earth rat, alley, rally rat, water rat, barn rat, sewer rat, dump rat, river rat, wharf rat, and in England, among people who didn't like the reigning house, the Hanoverian rat. All right. If you ever notice, anytime anything, anybody wants to hit somebody with something pejorative, they use the word rat. I've never found anything which is complimentary about a rat. First of all, the differences between the brown and the black rat are striking. The brown rat is pugnacious, warlike. It's the ones you've seen on TV or if you've seen them in your neighborhoods and so on. Uh, the ones that the other night on uh, 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 in New York City on TV where they were uh, just decimating those uh, uh, garbage bags that they leave out overnight. 
Uh, it's got thick hair, short ears, and a blunt nose. Its overall length is about 300 millimeters. Student on exam <laughs> once told me a brown rat was 300 meters. Uh, I, I put margin, run like hell, all right? Uh, the, 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 tail, the tail is two-thirds of its length. Now, the black rat hates war, likes people, likes he's socially adjusted. He's friendly. He likes to live with you. He likes to eat what you eat. He only has one negative. He's going to give you bubonic plague. <laughs> All right. so, they don't like each other. The black rat will not go in the course of his lifetime more than 300 yards from where he was born. The brown rat scours the globe. All right. It's found everywhere. He's, he's a nomad. Now, rats are extremely adaptable. They live everywhere on Earth except one place. Guess. Antarctica, correct. There's none in, that's probably the only thing going for Antarctica. All right. They don't have any rats. Be, uh, uh, these rats begin to breed at three months. They have six to eight litters a year with 6 to 13 offspring in each litter. Now, <laughs> this is going to happen because most of them are going to be eaten by the other rats or they're born into such filth that that's going to kill them early. Say that by some a, a, a master stroke, two rats and all their offspring live for three years, you would have 359 million. All right, <laughs> that's scary. A very elaborate society, both black and brown, extremely suspicious. They smell and leave urine traces anywhere where they suspect that's poison, all right? They're taught to test foods. They never cross a room like this. That's why they have those whiskers. They go along and, and those whiskers touch the sides to get wherever they're going. Nest building is a science and their favorite base for their nests are paper money. Right? They're not dumb, all right? 1340. Rat population of Europe, of Eurasia, massive. When in China, the plague begins. They think this thing started in the deserts, the Gobi in particular. And China, from 1340 to 45, incurs close to 100 million deaths. The Chinese and Indian populations, uh, I said that Europe's population was 75 million in 1300. The population of China in 1300 is around 400 million. India about 250 million. They, they've only tripled since 1300, uh, or a little bit more than that. Um, Chinese chronic clears didn't make a big thing of this. Eh, 100 million people died. Uh, almost nobody writes about this. Except when they do, they give these figures. And here it comes. 1345, Turkey. 1346, Greece and Italy. Look at the map as I do this. 1347, France. 1348, England. 1349, Germany. 1350, the Scandinavian world. And Russia. Now, if you look here, there's a circle. What's happening? And this is a perfect place to tell you about this because it's the Italians that are doing this. 
I can't say this too loud. Uh, by 1300, the Italian commercial machine, which they created the basic structure of Western uh, 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 economies, uh, everything from, from uh, accounts, uh, uh, it, it's, it's incredible. Uh, their ships monopolized trade throughout that whole area. And what was happening, every one of those ships was loaded with rats. And they're bringing those rats from Asia. They're all infected. They're landing at ports. Sometimes you get a ship coming in, comes right up, nothing moves on that ship. All people are dead. Rats were important to medieval ships, by the way. Uh, you would pay attention if you saw them starting to climb. They even call them rat lines. If you saw them starting to climb up those rat lines, you knew that you were seriously underwater down there. So you could save your life because of those rats. Uh, but these rats would hit shore, meet their kissing cousins, all right, and, and infect them. And this is the way this plague operates. It starts here. Next day it's here, 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 here. It just keeps on expanding, expanding, and expanding. All right? Now, who's hit the worst? In the cities, those ghettos were infamous. You had people packed in there. In some cities in the Middle Ages, the average residency per room was 14. Houses, uh, the residence wasn't used for living. You only slept there. You spent your life on the streets. So first of all, the proletariat of cities throughout Europe were decimated. Monasteries, compact. Nunneries, army camps. If you were under 25 and over 55, you got it. Uh, this is hard to explain. But 25 to 55, you stood your best chance of surviving this. If you're a man, you stood a greater risk of dying than a woman. The lower clergy got hit because why? They're going from one to the other one house to the other, extreme unction, the whole thing, and they're becoming carriers. Serfs, sailors, merchants, tradesmen, school teachers, students, they were absolutely decimated. If you could get away, like the rich could, and go out into the country, and live in a manor or castle, you could wait this out and then come back when this thing was over. Let's put this in historical perspective. This is only the first time in this century. It comes again in the 1360s, comes again in the 1370s, comes again in the 1380s. Each time, fewer and fewer people, but exactly the same groups get hit. All right? It's going to take Europe 150 years to get back to levels that you saw in the 1340. Uh, 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 in other words, it's going to take 150 years to get back that 25 million people. 